views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. And thank you for joining us on another episode of New York City Hispanic Chamber of Commerce Meetings with the Minds in partnership with BronxNet. Today we are elated to bring you a much needed conversation about business flight, small businesses, and how real is the threat. We are so excited to be joined by none other than Council Member Mark Jonah of District 13 in the Bronx. He is also the chair of the Committee on Small Businesses. Council member Mark, welcome. As the chair of the Small Business Committee, you are definitely an essential worker. I mean, you had it hard before, but coronation has taken this to a whole nother level. Small and big businesses are panicking, with few exceptions, you know, Amazon and the Netflix of the world. Council member, can you talk to us about what we are failing to see? Can you enlighten us? Like what's going on? As I always begin during this time of crisis and pandemic, uh, I extend my my sincerest condolences to anyone that has lost a loved one. I don't think there's anyone that has not, that does not know of someone that has passed from this pandemic. And I also keep in my heart and prayers Anyone that is currently battling this virus, uh, in essence, they're fighting for their lives. So I will keep praying for them. You know, we've seen the writing has been on the wall for some time now. We've seen our commercial corridors and the number of vacancies increasing before COVID-19 crisis. It was evident that the between e-commerce, uh, consumer behavior changes and big box store competition, that our micro businesses, our small businesses were suffering and they were barely holding on. And this is before the crisis. During this crisis, I've heard some startling reports that as high as 25% of our small businesses will never reopen. That would be devastating to our communities, our neighborhoods, our commercial corridors. With that, we're going to lose uh, small businesses that have invested so much and have given this city and this state so much. We're going to be losing on employment. We're going to be losing mm -hmm. on tax base. If ever we need to reiterate the magic phrase, shop local, buy local, it is now because COVID-19 has mm -hmm. accelerated how we purchase our products and our services. If you didn't use third-party food delivery apps before, you do it now. If you mm -hmm. didn't use Amazon before, you are doing it now. Mm -hmm. So it's ever more important mm -hmm. that we start living and uh, living by a code, and that is supporting our local mom and pop shops, our micro businesses. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the coin the phrase uh, micro businesses. I'm mm -hmm. proud to say. I've defined it in law and in statute. It's companies that have less than 10 employees. You mentioned shop local, support them now more than ever. And, you know, I believe in that. We all believe in that in the chamber is how we make our uh, community thrive. Really, you know, it, can you share with us? Uh, you mentioned 25 percent will, you know, will not make it through. Not make it. No, not. It's not make it through. 25% of our small businesses will never reopen. Ooh. That's devastation. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you know, it's interesting. How do we, I don't even know if there's a silver lining in this. I don't even know what there kind is. of question I can ask you. Like, how do we help these 25% well, businesses to at least have a fighting chance? 
So you know, like, here's how we do it. You're, mm -hmm. That's what it's about. See, this isn't a question about thriving. Mm -hmm. This is about how we help our small businesses survive. Mm -hmm. Not even thrive where they're going to make uh, money and profits. Mm -hmm. We just need them to survive. Mm -hmm. And what is the most disturbing is New York City initiated um, a loans and grants program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, what we should be upset about is the dollar amount that was allocated through the SBS, Small Business Services. Mm -hmm. The 200,000 small businesses in New York City, SBS, through this administration, through the mayor, only allocated $49 million. That is laughable. That $49 million can help our small businesses. Mm -hmm. But the true tragedy is when I had a hearing last week, mm -hmm. we started asking the hard questions. The commissioner testified that in the borough of the Bronx, only 1% of the mm -hmm. total loans were allocated and only 3% of the total grants were allocated. You want to talk about injustice? You want to talk about the... Uh, the, the tale of two boroughs, the tale of two cities that everyone has harped on and this administration has built a name on, well, he just created the worst scenario ever. The economic engine may be in Manhattan, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's the outer boroughs that is the fuel for that engine. Mm -hmm. And we need to preserve and protect. So what is that we can do? We can get more grants to our small businesses. We need grants, and we need grants that are appropriate for these mm -hmm. small businesses mm -hmm. to reinvent their business models in this new world. Um, council member, I'm so happy that you're going up to bat for us. But you know, the as a public servant, you also understand that you you serve the people, right? But this is the time for the people to work with you. Right. What what can we do? What do we have the power to do at this point to demand to demand that, you know, the elected officials, the people uh, making, you know, creating the bills and all these regulations? Like, how do we get them to understand our plight and how do we get them to understand that it is important that we survive? Salma, that's another great question. And let me to your point. Our small businesses have been given back to this great city. They made or helped make this city the great city that it is. Right. The state. They've been given back in taxes. They've been employing people. They've mm -hmm. been providing products and services to New Yorkers. They pay much more than they get back. And in their time of need, we're not there for them. So what is that you can do? Stay united. Mm -hmm. Push back. Take the approach that an attack on any small business is an attack on all small business. Mm -hmm. Do not allow to be divided and conquered. Every dollar that we invest in these small businesses is going to yield a return on that investment. That means businesses will continue to employ, businesses mm -hmm. will pay taxes, and continue to make our communities and our commercial corridors vibrant, a great place to live, and offer the opportunities to walk from your home to buy products and services. This is this is what I'm afraid of. You know, small businesses, of course, obviously contribute to the the overall economy of New York City. We get that, and we started this conversation talking about you know business flight. How real is this? Small businesses won't even afford won't even be able to afford to move elsewhere, <laughs> right? So, I guess I mean. I don't even want to think about what's next for our city. Is it, would it have, you know, would it become a desert after? We, I don't even want to go there. <laughs> economic, it would be an mm -hmm. economic devastation. Mm -hmm. It would also be a disservice. Mm -hmm. Our small businesses, like the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, represents a unique ethnic group. Mm -hmm. That ethnic, those small businesses that are focused on ethnicities, mm -hmm. well, where can you buy service and products? Mm -hmm that the Hispanic community has come to appreciate, that is catered to them, whether it be food, whether it be services that are focused 
on this specific ethnicity if those small businesses close? At this point, as you know, we have examples of, of our small businesses even reinventing themselves. We have, for example, Port Morris Distillery uh, here in the Bronx that's now making hand, sanitize, hand sanitizers and distributing it. I want to know, do you have any examples of any other uh, small businesses that have been reinventing themselves in order to, you know, to have that chance of survival? Well, listen, the creativity that comes from us, they're resilient. Our small business mm -hmm. owners, they really are resilient. Um, you know, we, we talk about the American dream. We, we talk about the importance of these small businesses, but what we don't realize the risk takers that they are, mm -hmm. that they work hard and against all odds, especially the Hispanic uh, community that understands it, where they've immigrated here, may not know the language, they may not uh, have an um, education that allows them, but they worked hard, held two jobs, saved money, learned a skill set, and then opened a business with that experience, allowing that their dreams and their investments to fail. Mm -hmm would be a disaster. You know, a lot of our small business owners and what we all have in common is we're watching the news, right? Constantly and consistently. What are some trigger words or trigger phrases we should be on the lookout for that is, a, uh, is, is kind of like a no, no, we don't want that. You know, is there anything that you see like so redundant that can, that we need to be on the lookout for and making sure that we, we don't stand for, for so it? I'm gonna put it to you in the best phrase. Remember, I come from the uh, private sector. I came out of small business, so I, I haven't lived the life of a public servant. I know what it means to be a small business operator. I know what it means to be accountable for payroll and rent and keeping, making sure that you can keep your doors open. How many times that you don't pay yourself so you can pay your workers and the mm -hmm. sacrifices. And also that you work side by side with employers and employees work side by side. The real enemy is not the employer for employees. The real enemy to the, both the employee and the employer is government. Mm. Mm -hmm. We, and when I say we, because now I'm part of government, mm -hmm. we know how to take. We know how to take more and more. <laughs> Thank you so much for this. I also want to, you know, of course, end on a positive note, even though you've given us, you know, you've outlined the issues and you've outlined ways in which we can solve those issues. If there, is there anything else you would like to say to the Hispanic community, our members, our partners and affiliates, uh, just to close us out? Uh, we're, we're in this pandemic together and together we're going to get through this crisis. You have a strong advocate in the city council fighting for small business rights to make sure that you can survive and continue to live the dream and, and benefit from the fruits of your labor. You've invested in this city and in this state. This city and this state has to now invest in you. And thank you once again for being our ally and being on our side and understanding us from both a, a personal level, a, a business owner, an entrepreneur, and as a public servant. We are uh, so uh, thankful to have you on our side, and we appreciate you. I'm grateful to you, um, and I value you as much as you value me. And I'm, I'm just in a very fortunate position to be here and uh, by the grace of God, I'm going to do whatever I can to make sure that you have a loud voice. Thank you. God bless you all. Stay Thank healthy you. and safe. <laughs> you too. You too. The New York City Hispanic Chamber of Commerce thrives itself on networking and connecting you to one another. Your membership is important. Your partnership is important. We encourage you to continue watching Meetings with the Minds in partnership with BronxNet Television. It's how we stay together, it's how we fight for one another, and it's how we will survive COVID-19.